So I am joined today with, I mean, massage therapist, father, husband, personal trainer, jack of all trades, Nick Garman. Nick, welcome to the show, man. Hello. That was a very generous introduction. I try to think about, uh, well, you're a great guy, man. I feel like people, people need like proper introduction. I hate when I like watch a show or a podcast and someone's like, hey, this is Nick. I'm like, so why do I want to hear what Nick has to say? Tell me, tell me something about this guy that's captivating to me. Sure. Uh, so let's start out with uh, our relationship, I guess, first on a personal level. Uh, I started seeing you for massage. Was it in 15? 16? I don't even remember. It's been, I mean, it's been over five, it's been for sure five years. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're the owner of Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness. Correct. Owner and founder, I should say, because those are yeah. different things. Yeah. Well, and, and we actually, when I started the company, I had a business partner uh, named Amy Bradley. And so she actually helped me to create the company. Um, and she was with us for the, about the first couple years. Um, and then she stepped aside because she had another uh, great uh, opportunity with uh, Stryker. So she works for them. Nice. nice. When in your life did you feel like massage therapy was a d direction you were at least interested in? Uh, it was actually in my mid twenties. Um, so it was around 2005, 2006 that I'd been kind of bouncing around to separate jobs, uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, and I was actually in school for, uh, automotive tech, which is a hobby of mine. And I kind of got to that point where I realized I didn't want to make my hobby, my career. And so I had to kind of reevaluate again. And uh, while I was going to classes for automotive tech, I, I wanted to uh, test out massage therapy as an elective because they offered it as like an elective course through Valley. Uh, and when it came back around to kind of reevaluate what I wanted to do, I kind of thought about looking back at massage again because um, I, I was always comfortable with giving friends massages. Um, I was always told I was good at it. And so I was like, you know, let's at least look at what this might be look like um, and once I got into the building which was Kalamazoo Center for Healing Arts and at the time they were at their KL location which was like big beautiful uh, architecturally interesting building um, and as soon as I started classes I was like yep this is it this makes sense that's awesome uh, did pursuit of massage happen first or pursuit of like fitness in some format definitely massage um, first from a career standpoint. Okay. I'd done a little bit of fitness on myself. Like I, I actually, I was a tiny kid. I, I weighed 140 pounds soaking wet uh, at my height. So I was super, super thin. Um, and when I met my current wife, Carrie, uh, was the first time I actually got, ever gotten a gym membership. Um, and so I actually gained 45 pounds in six months. Just starting oh my to God. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what my body does when I actually do exercise. And so uh, I went from 140 to 185 and, um, you know, was cut out of stone. And so I, I interest, uh, instantly gained an interest in the fitness field, uh, but I didn't look at it as a potential career path until a few years into being a massage therapist. Interesting. I think that's really cool. Um, what what was it that caused you to go from like i'm a massage therapist to like i'm interested in expanding my information and knowledge fields and then like obviously parlaying them together um it actually took a couple of big life events um so i was practicing for oh gosh it was about three or four years um ooh, let me turn off that <laughs> Um, and I, I, uh, we moved away from the area. So we moved over to like the Fenton area, which is just South of Clint. I had a hard time finding a, a job over there while we were over there. We were only there for about six months. And when I moved back, I got my, my old job at the uh, Council Center for Healing Arts again. And it took me, it kind of was like a reset. So I had to start building clientele again. Yeah. Um, 
And then we were there for maybe back for maybe six months and I broke my right arm and I broke my elbow playing basketball. And so um, that again was like another reset button on my career. It was like, uh, I'm basically starting over again. Um, and so at that point, I kind of reevaluated and said, you know what? I never really ever set any career goals for myself. I just kind of went out of school, started working. It was just like, this is where I'm working. This is what I'm doing. And so I had to reevaluate what I really wanted to do with my career. And so that's when I started thinking about, okay, what's ideal scene for me? And when it, it came down to it, like ultimate goal is to be like a massage therapist for an NFL football team. Uh, in particular, the Lions, of course, you know, somebody's got to help them win. Somebody. Uh, <laughs> and so I, uh, I, I, I kind of looked at all the aspects I needed to do to how do I get myself to that point? And I started implementing those things. And one of them was to start incorporating more fitness into what I do and start, you know, training the way coaches might train. And from there, I gained a deeper love of fitness as a, uh, as a career avenue as well. So you, you adapted sports massage pretty early into your practice. Yeah, about three or four years. Okay. Man. Um, what, were there any uh, specific, whether it be uh, instances or uh, formal education or any like single uh, topic or experience that like, changed or revolutionized like the scope of which you view your career or how you do something within your career? Uh, there were a few things that popped up. So most of my sports specific massage therapy training came from a man named Earl Wink. Um, and uh, he actually owns a practice over in Ann Arbor and works with the University of Michigan. Um, he's also worked with several like uh, Olympic athletes, including um, runners and figure skaters. And so a bulk of my training came from him. And so he really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff as far as like uh, incorporating movement into what I do. Um, so whether it's having the client on the table do, do movement and activation while I'm working or if I'm getting in the, them into the right position uh, for whatever technique I need to do. That kind of kickstarted everything, I think, as far as like the style and approach that I have. Um, and then from there, it's just bits and pieces I picked up from other continuing ed classes, um, understanding the function of the body, so the kinesiology behind how people move has made a big difference. So paying more attention to body mechanics um, for their sport. And with that, learning to kind of focus on not trying to like help every single person um, which, you know, I'm pretty confident I have the capabilities to do that, but who can I really specialize and hone in and really help them? Um, yeah. and that's when I started yeah. picking sports that made sense for me, either from an understanding, like I already understand the sport, so I know how to work with it. Um, or maybe I already had clientele that I was working, um, with specifically in that sport. And so I had a better understanding of it. And so I could really focus on it. Yeah, I mean, having been a client of yours for five plus years, I, I feel like, yeah, exactly how you said, you, you have the abilities to help anyone, uh, but you truly like do a great job of expanding your your knowledge and your specialty within your niche. Um, and to me, that's how people become highly successful and, and highly passionate about their job. At least that's certainly one thing about massage therapy too is you you'll not find a more passionate other than maybe uh personal trainers <laughs> you will find a more passionate group of people about their jobs you know we don't get paid very well but we sure damn love yeah. it so tell us uh, a little bit uh, like a humble brag here about some of your accolades and the clients and uh, clientele that you've worked with in the past or currently um, probably the biggest one, especially for the CrossFit community would be Linda, uh, Linda Elston. So, um, she's been to the games, gosh, I think six or seven out of the last eight or nine years, um, as a, as a master's athlete. And I've gone with her the last three years that it's been in Madison. Um, uh, this year's going to be a little different, of course, because of everything going on. Um, so I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but, um, uh, the last three years we went and that was exciting for me because um, it gave me a deeper look into CrossFit as a comp 
uh, competitive level because um, I understood CrossFit before that. Um, I had done it a few times myself kind of here and there. Um, and of course, working with Linda, I understood it from what she was doing for herself. But once I actually went to the games and started to see it at that competitive level in person, it was like a whole new ballpark as far as like understanding my approach and treatment for her, but also like just understanding the sport in general and like yeah. the draw that it has. That's um, very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, some other things I'm really proud of is working with uh, Western Michigan University's football team. Um, yeah. So that's kind of for me yeah. was a big step towards <laughs> that end goal that I have. Because uh, a lot of the athletes that I've worked with through them have gone on to become NFL athletes. Um, and some of them have even come back to see me after uh, being in the NFL, which is pretty exciting. Um, I can remember that first time after I started working with them, which, which was actually the very first year where I opened up the business. Uh, that was one big piece of that helped us kind of to get started um, was that account. And I remember the first time one of the athletes I, I worked with, he got drafted. And just how exciting that was. Just like, oh, my God, I know that guy. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. Uh, what do you think are, like, a couple of facts or reasons behind the value uh, of sports specific, like, not even sports specific, but sports massage coupled with, you know, an active lifestyle? Um, the, I mean, the biggest benefit you're going to get is if you are an active person is going to be the recovery time. Um, so you're just going to see a significant improvement in your recovery time and your ability to get back to work. Um, uh, especially if you're training for something specific. Um, you know, we all, those of us that have been in sports or have trained for something specific kind of understand that aspect of you know, overtraining and the soreness and, and the risk of injury that it comes with that, um, the stress that comes with that. And all of those things are benefited from getting massage on a regular basis. Um, you know, studies have shown that it reduces downs, delayed onset muscle soreness. It, it, it um, you know, improves uh, your ability to deal with stress, um, both mentally and physically. Um, it reduces inflammation because I mean there was actually a study that was done a while ago I, I reference it all the time but it's probably outdated now uh, that, that showed that it actually turned off uh, the genes that create inflammation in the muscle tissue Wow. Uh, wow. yeah so it was like and it was a pretty specific study because it was like they took muscle biopsies from a one leg or, or from both legs on an individual who had did some sort of exertive exercise I think it was an exercise bike or something um, and they only massaged one leg, and the leg that got massaged had that those changes versus the leg that did not get massaged. So wow. it was pretty wow. conclusive, and I was like, that's amazing. I'm actually turning jeans on and off when I touch people. That's crazy. That is super wild. I did not know that. Uh, I always <laughs> find, I mean, like, significant – I think so many people go to the massage, uh, and they, like, go in, they get, you know, massaged, and they're like – they leave, and they're like, I don't feel that different. And for me, yeah. it's, it's like, I'm sure everyone is different, but for me, it's about a 12 to 24 hour window. Like when I usually wake up the next day is where I'm like, and I start moving again, start plump, pumping blood through my body. I'm like, wow, I feel way better today than I felt yesterday after my massage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of the, it's kind of the same effect as if when you get like a good, uh, good training in, it's like, you're going to be a little bit sore afterwards, but you're going to be really sore the next day. Well, with a massage, you might get the massage. You might feel a little bit better afterwards. You might even feel a little bit sore afterwards, but then usually yeah. the next day, it's when you see all those benefits. Like, Oh yeah. wow, I feel great. Who, uh, who chooses your guys' playlist? Like, is it, do you choose everyone's playlist for music in the massage or is it every therapist chooses their own? Uh, we actually just use like Amazon Unlimited Music, so we can play okay. pretty much anything that either the client wants or that we feel like listening to for the day. It's always great stuff. I mean, I like I love coming in personally because I like talking music with you. Uh, <laughs> I feel like music and cars are two pretty huge hobbies that you have. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I definitely enjoy listening to music. And that that was one aspect of when we opened up that I was like, you know, I'm not going to stick to the typical spa music if I don't have to. That's yeah. just my business. I'm going to listen to what I want to listen to. So I mean, like, like, 
yeah. the, the running water is and stuff is fine, but I I can't uh, get down to like two cellos cover of Metallica for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, you, you'll hear that. You'll hear you know kind of the soft dubstepy stuff, <laughs> things that are gonna be like atmospheric in the background, but not you know and yeah. necessarily. Tool some uh, some chilled out Tool covers are good. Yeah, huh? yeah. I even listened to the new Tool album with a few clients. Nice. Uh, so what do you think, what does, what has, I guess, wa from watching and working with Linda to now you being an active participant in CrossFit, what uh, have you taken away from it? Uh, the biggest thing that I see Linda do, n not only just the fact, thinking about her age and what she can do, uh, like makes me realize that they're, you know, I shouldn't limit myself. Uh, you know, I should be safe with myself. I shouldn't say I shouldn't limit myself. Limit myself to a safety standard. <laughs> yeah. Understand what I can do and do that. But also that know that like, I mean, she started pretty late in CrossFit and she's just, I mean, genetically she's built for it. But as at some point it's like age is not a factor. It's like, right. it's, it's your commitment and your willingness to put forth the, the, the effort. Um, and for me, it's also about pacing. Like that's what I see do best is like, if she's doing a wad, she finds her pace, she hits that pace and she sticks to that pace and it works out for her every time. And that's something that I'm constantly trying to work with myself is not coming out of the gates at a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, Cause I do have a tendency yeah. to do that. And then I burn out and then I'm just like, you know, dragging ass the whole rest of the, the you know, last two rounds or whatever. And so it's like learning to pace myself is like, okay, what is the pace that I can do? What is my aerobic capacity with this particular workout. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of obvious uh, things about elite athletes that we admire, you know, their, their consistency, their motivation, their drive, their genetic gifts, all these things. But one of the most impressive things that I see in high level CrossFit athletes is their self awareness. Like they, they know what 80% feels like, or they know this is how fast I can go and sustain for 12 minutes without blowing up. Whereas a novice or even intermediate athlete shows up and is like, Whoa! and I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Or the opposite, they overpace and the workout ends and they're like, oh, I should have went harder. Yeah. Awareness is, yeah. So, uh, what about your experience as, like as just a client like to do so you obviously have a lot of background in powerlifting, personal training and all forms of standardized exercise you've done crossfit workouts where does crossfit and your like personal level of interest fall like and, and what do you what do you find i guess good and bad about it um good about it is I think the the variety I, I appreciate that it's it's not the same workout every time and it almost never is and um, and I you know I, I appreciate that aspect of it I appreciate the aspect that I can adjust it as needed too it's like yeah. oh here's the prescribed yeah. workout but like you know I know I can't do can't stand push up so I'm gonna do something different you know yeah. or like I know I can't do 15 burpees in a minute so I'm gonna adjust that so you know things like that. And, and so I appreciate that there's, there's like a prescribed of like, here's, you know, if you have the capabilities, here's the workout. If not, go ahead and adjust it as you need to. And I think a lot of people don't understand that about CrossFit. And I, I try to explain that to people, you know, they're like, Oh, I see people killing themselves and they're dying. And it's like, well, you don't have to do that. Right. It's like, you, know, you push yourself, but you don't necessarily have to push yourself to like laying on the floor for five minutes after the exercise either. Yeah. Uh, and so, I guess I would say that would be the one negative thing about it, I believe, is the, the misunderstood nature of it. It's like, you know, a lot of people don't understand that you can adjust it to what your capabilities are. They just see people doing these crazy things and they're like, I can't do that. Yeah. Uh, and so I did. I never had that understanding because when I first started doing CrossFit, I didn't know what it was. And so I just did whatever I was told. Um, I can remember one of my very first workouts was 20 minutes of burpee box jumps. That's like all we did. And so I was just like, all right, let's get after this. And 
And, you know, after I think about 10 minutes, I no longer was doing burpees because my shoulder couldn't handle the push-up portion of it. And so, and then I was doing step-ups for like the last five minutes. So yeah. it's like, I learned very quickly how intense just two, mo two movements in 20 minutes can be. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's the other aspect of it is the education level. You got to find a gym that's willing to put in the education level for you when you're starting out, you know, and that, that I would say, Say is the big negative of CrossFit is that I think it's grown so exponentially so fast you you end up with a lot of subpar gyms out there. Yeah, that are just in it because it's the new fad and they're not actually willing to put in the time like you guys are into teaching people proper technique and how to be safe. That's the scary thing with accessibility, right? Whether it's whether it's music or health and fitness, when it's a very low barrier to entry, a lot of people can get in, and that might seem like a good thing, but then it's like quality control becomes very difficult. Correct. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Well, uh, before we uh, sign off, is there anything lasting that I've missed that you want to mention that you want to plug? Uh, obviously, I are huge advocates of you guys. We send clients to you guys. Nick is incredible. Um, I just want to reiterate real fast, sorry, one more time, that I've been seeing him for five years. I don't, I mean, barring COVID, I have no reason to stop uh, in the foreseeable future. I mean, I, it's been incredible from my drumming to me competing for regionals, uh, just everything. I mean, I thrash my body and this dude keeps me alive and not broken, so. Uh, I guess the, the biggest thing I'd just like to mention is, you know, uh, during COVID at this point, if you feel like supporting us, we do have avenues that you can do that. Um, We've also got a feature on our website where you can send tips directly to our therapists as well. Uh, Cause um, you know, some of them have been able to get up on unemployment, but some of them not. And so if you have a, a willingness to do a little bit of donation towards the therapist directly, um, that's how you can do that as well. Awesome. Uh, every little bit helps. Awesome. Uh, we're all getting there. We're going to be ready to open when it's time. Uh, I've managed to secure some funding, which is outstanding. It took a while, but we got it. Good. <laughs> so we'll be ready to go when it's ready to go, but we got to make sure it's safe because we're literally touching people. So yeah, we'll include uh, a link to the website in the, the Dropbox below. But uh, mm -hmm. Nick, I appreciate you so much, man, taking the time and coming and joining me today. And I definitely look forward to when we can see each other again at the gym or at the massage parlor, not here, not on the computer screen. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. Yeah, it'll Thanks, be, man. It'll be an exciting day to walk through that threshold. Yes. Bring the day back. But uh -huh. thanks so much, man. And uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thanks. You too, sir.